Hi, Colonel Tex here with the next video in the series Beyond uh, Building Beyond Linux from Scratch 9.1. So we've reached a stage where we've got a graphical environment and a graphical browser, which makes things a lot easier for us um, copying and pasting commands. Um, easier and also makes things more accurate, less, less likely to type things in incorrectly and also probably a bit more um, accurate in terms of copying and pasting from the text browser because that was quite difficult to read um, and know where commands ended without reading carefully what was on the screen. So I've booted into um, the GUI and got a browser up. There's just a couple of little things I want to show you before I um, actually carry on building packages. The first thing is um, something when we got the graphical environment up and running um, we did something called or we typed in a command called GLX info to show that um, the graphics subsystem was working and we had things like DRI um, working I think it was something like uh, grep DR uh, oh in capital sorry DR yeah, dear eye, there it is, so it shows that it's working and how it's, um, um, you yeah, what hardware it's using and so on. Now, there was a companion um, program called GLX Gears, which actually runs a little graphical tool. And it's also quite useful because um, it can show that the... Uh, performance of the graphics subsystem is up to scratch basically that it's running correctly um, and not running too slowly um, what you can do I mean it's got well, as you can see there with the help it's got its own info page which gives you stuff and it actually runs after it's produced this information so if I just scroll back you can see it gives some basic stuff about the GL subsystem the reason why this is popping back is because it's updating the screen and what it's doing is updating with information on how fast it's painting to the screen so what this does it locks to the refresh rate of the monitor as I remember correctly so you can see I'm running at 60 frames per second and the OpenGL subsystem is managing to maintain that more or less it's always never going to be accurate um, because it's doing an exact number of frames in, in an exact number, of, uh, exact amount of time. So you can see that it is performing to its best ability. Now the way to push this to the limit is you can escape this with pressing the escape button when you've got the graphics window highlighted. Um, there's an option there to go full screen. So this will really push if you're on a, like an older system or a slow graphics subsystem or it's not installed properly there's some feature missing or it's not rendering correctly maybe it's a software um, subsystem you're using rather than hardware full screen will push it it'll run the tool at, at full screen as, as it suggests now while you can't see anything at the moment when you press escape now after say the five seconds or so give it a chance to run a few times it will still have displayed how fast it's going. You can see it's still keeping up at 60 frames a second. So that's quite a good little test just to check that you've um, got your display uh, set up correctly. The other thing was um, is to do with TWM and the X windowing system and how I've set this up. So if I actually come out of this um, X window session start it off again I'll show you what I've done um, what I've done I've set the windows up so they start in a default position when I run StarTex so you can see I've got a main input screen on the left and the browser on set up on the right and what I've done I've modified the um, startup so I've still got the same three windows so this is now the login window but I've hidden it behind the browser just so that I don't accidentally quit from the X window session this terminal here is the second main terminal that appeared before when we started up 
TWM and started up at Xorg. So that's now going to be my main window and I've still got this third little window just hovering in the background in case I decide to use it. And then I've configured the browser to start up in this position at this size as well. And to do that I've just put some simple commands in the um, xinit file that we saw before. So if I go to that now. So it's in etc x11 app defaults x init rc. You sudo to edit it, obviously. It's a system file. Okay. What's happened there? Interesting. Oh, of course half asleep let's give it a command to run so vi so what i've done there's the x clock that i've disabled it's up to you if you want that shown or not it'll if i left that up it'll be in the background anyway because i've got the browser covering that area of the screen um these two next uh ones as you saw before you can turn off the um like the blanking on the screen and the screen saver so that's what i've done with these two it's you probably wouldn't normally want to do this i've only done it so that when um, I've got a command running for some length of time that the screen doesn't go black um, and obviously the, the video just shows a black screen so th these two you probably don't want that just turns off the energy star settings of the monitor and this one turns off the screen saver um, this one here I've set the keyboard to be a uh, ordinary PC 104 key keyboard with a GB or United Kingdom uh, layout just so that when I'm typing I'm not caught out by the fact that some symbols are in the wrong place because it's default to an American keyboard so you may want to add that if you've got a different keyboard a different language keyboard and then these two here these are the two terminals Th this last one is the login terminal so that's the one I've made tiny it's only 10 by 10 10, 10 characters across 10 lines down and you can see I've stuck it, stuck it in the corner, 1800 pixels across, 850 pixels down on the full HD screen, which is why I've used those sorts of numbers. Obviously, if your screen's bigger or smaller, you'll want to adjust them. The um, the third little window, that I've just kept that the same, but just stuck it roughly in the middle of the screen at the bottom. And then the, my main um, console that I'll be using, the main... Um, uh, terminal that I'll be using I've maximized it to 80 by 43 and this FS switch means font size so I've set a font size of 15 um, so obviously depending on what you set that would depend on how many lines and how far across the 80 columns appears on the screen but so I've just done a bit of tinkering to get that and lastly I start Falcon off and put it into the background as well Falcon just remembers the last uh, geometry that it was used with so when you press Control Q to quit or you use the um, the menu to quit um, it just remembers where it was last time so you don't need to set any um, set, I don't even know if there is any geometry settings you can put on that command I don't know but it's, it's unnecessary um, also notice the first three commands they haven't got the ampersand at the end and the reason is they just return after they've executed they just return so you don't need to put the ampersand after them to put them into the background however xterm it runs while the x terminal is on the screen so this script will just hang at that point because the x term hasn't quit so you do need to put x term into the background you do need to have the ampersand same with falcon you need to put that in the background as well because um, it will just pause the script while Falcon is running and it will only carry on with the script once you quit Falcon so you do need to put that into the background the exact one doesn't need one at all so that's just some little changes just so that every time I quit the session with the hidden uh, wrong cursor with the hidden um, login X term I can just start up X windows again and it just puts everything back to 
where I want it. So it's just some defaults for me just for convenience. 